uh, you know, after the arm earnings uh, and the reaction in SoftBank, I'm thinking to myself, boy, uh, Masai Son should be pretty happy. It's like, okay, that, that IPO paid off. Yeah, and he, he took quite a lot of criticism because if you remember, they, uh, there was a transaction where they bought ARM um, from the Vision Fund at a, at a price which was seen as high. But now ARM um, share price has rocketed through that number. And, and in retrospect, it looks like he, he made the, the call absolutely right to actually increase his exposure of ARM um, into an IPO. Normally people sell down in an IPO, but Massa actually doubled down, and that seems to be paying off. I mean, if you look at this move in ARM um, and the impact it's had in SoftBank yesterday, and you're gonna see a very strong follow through today, this is almost like a white swan type of event for SoftBank. And I think a lot of people were, were saying they're not really an AI company, but now ARM um, is convincing more people it is leveraged into AI. This is going to be a very positive uh, inflection point for the story on SoftBank stock as well, I think. Yeah, it comes at a good, good time as well. I mean, the stock uh, could use the help. I mean, I think you're noting that they've lagged uh, not just the Topix, but, but also the Mag7. Yeah, they haven't been in, you know, um, accepted as an AI play, even though, you know, they, they spent almost $100 billion on what they were saying were AI investments from several years ago. And part of the problem with that was a number of these companies were private. So the ARM IPO was obviously the first big one to come out of the Vision Fund in a while, and that has gone incredibly well. Um, my sense is investors are still cautious. What else is in the box of SoftBank Vision Fund? But if the IPO market um, follows ARM and allows a few more companies out there, you know, people are going to get dragged into examining what's in that box. And, and hopefully they're going to appreciate more of the AI investments that SoftBank's done. But probably for now, it doesn't really matter because simply in terms of the size of ARM in SoftBank, some of the parts has rocketed up so much. A number of people will just be able to say, you know what, this is a great proxy play on AI and ARM, maybe in the way that uh, a few years ago when people thought Alibaba and China e-commerce was a good thing, the SoftBank was a very good way of playing that theme. So perhaps SoftBank can play a bit of catch up to um, its bigger AI global um, peers in the future. All right, right now I've got SoftBank Group uh, up 11%, 73.50 or uh, thereabouts. Oliver, uh, you know, are, are you surprised or rather, uh, do you think investors uh, are, should be disappointed that uh, there's no news about share buybacks? Yeah, it's, it's a curious one because SoftBank has a very rich history of doing large buybacks um, and Japan is, you know, corporate Japan moving that way a lot more this year and last year. SoftBank's been absent. Many people thought with uh, the extra shares they got in T-Mobile that that would give them um, a chance to buy back shares. They even noted themselves, you know, the discount is pretty high, 40 to 50%, um, but they're not taking action now. In fact, um, they mentioned that they thought sometimes uh, buybacks are not a sustainable way of boosting the share price, and they wanted to focus more on NAV gains, i.e. invest for the future. Uh, but with the movement of ARM, you, you would have to say the evidence is that the NAV uh, is moving up pretty rapidly, so time for a buyback will come. But definitely um, some disappointment from investors that they didn't take action yesterday.